Hi, my name is Laura Cohen Ashman. I'm the writer director of Sawa Hall Audible series. Um, and this is what it means to be a series accompanying each episode of Sawa Hall. And this episode is what it means to be a black mother. And I'll be talking to Kalechi Okafor, who I will let introduce herself. My name is Kalechi Okafor. I'm an actor, director, writer, and a podcaster, and just all around a multi-award winning baby girl. There's so much trauma around that. There's so much trauma linked to how um, black women interact with womanhood, interact with femininity. And a lot of it happened before we could even really have a say as to how that was going to play out. When I consider racism and um, ash and I consider these just these experiences and I talk about forces, a lot of it feels like forces literally outside of your control. And that is the real horror to me. Like it's, it's wonderful to experience work and experience it within a genre and think to yourself, wow, hmm, this feels very much like my day-to-day -day life. Hmm. And, and everything, everything has been constructed in such a way, like you've constructed it in such a way that we were actually not in my world. We're, we're somewhere else, yet the same terrors, the same fears can still find me even when I'm meant to be in a space of escapism. Hmm. I want to find a way for them to get through that situation and have them harness the things that society tells them makes them less than or others them and makes them weak, like love and empathy and relationships and nurturing and hope. And, you know, instead to have them harness those things and we weaponize those things in order to like heal themselves on an individual yes. level like as a couple but also to heal what is the monster of the story and you mm. can kind of expand that out and you know in term and apply it to the ways in which racism is a monster of our mm. society and misogyny is a monster of our society patriarchy capitalism all these things um are monsters and, and we use sort of supernatural creatures and monsters in our storytelling as a way to explore the things that are so scary about the real world it's 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 really interesting i look at um you know venus hottentot that that's what they called her um quite derogatory sarah bartman right and sarah bartman her labia her skeleton was on show in paris for an embarrassingly long time. And I think it was only in the 90s that they finally returned her body parts to South Africa. I think maybe at the request of Nelson Mandela, I've got to check. Mm. But before that, they'd taken it off. They weren't, it was no longer on show in the, um, in the French museum, but they still held onto it. And, you know, it had to be requested that they send her body parts back. And I just wonder, have we ever had um, a white woman's body parts on display at a museum for all to see? When we consider these things and we consider the relationships that black women have towards, um, you know, to, towards society and the relationships that um, society has with black women, when we call black women angry, because that's one of the stereotypes, we call black women angry, we call them sassy, we call them aggressive. One, if they were to be all of those things, because I'm a believer that we should reclaim our anger, right? But if they were to be all of these things, what made them angry? What happened in history to make black women angry? What's happening? What's playing out in society right now that could possibly make black women angry? I don't know. When I think about my experience with the healthcare system in the UK, it's not one of you know, it's not one of joy. You know, I, I would like to experience what other people experience when they say, oh, well, you know, I went to the GP or I went to the doctors and they treated me so well and I felt very safe. And mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever felt really safe in that environment. I just don't feel like I'm listened to. But, you know, when we look at the forefathers as it, um, they were of um, medicine and science, a lot of these men were eugenicists. Like they 
didn't even consider the black body to be human in the first place. You talk about the stereotypes of black women, about being angry, about being um, aggressive, about being sassy, about being strong, the strong black woman narrative. Oh, yeah. that is that is one that feels like a ball and chain, because at the same time, as a black woman, I recognize my res my resilience. I recognize the strength that I have and that has brought me this far. However, that is not the strength that society is talking about. The strength that society is talking about is one of somebody who is unfeeling, you know, who, who has no emotion, that does not feel pain because it's one of the ways of having um, justified the slave trade and colonization for so long and the subjugation of black women for so long. If you can dehumanize me and say like, she doesn't even feel anything anyway. So she could be out there doing whatever forever. It makes, it, it means that you can go unchecked. It, I'm not human, so it's fine. So that's, that, I don't think that's ever left the medical industry. So when we look at the, the textbooks that was only um, stopped from being um, published, I think a couple of years ago, because in the textbook, it said something like, oh, you know, black people tend to exaggerate the level of pain that they feel. So you have to take this into account when you are, you know, interacting with them. There are other textbooks, if not the same one, that talk about, you know, when it talks about the shapes of the pelvis and it describes the pelvis shape that would be more common uh, with black women as being ape-like. Wow. And this is what we're saying. So even if the person doesn't realize, this nurse, this doctor doesn't realize they're absorbing all of these narratives that blackness is akin to um, not being human. Yeah. So then when it's time to now treat, um, you know, black women to treat black people, but to treat black women specifically, all of those notions, all of those narratives are operating the whole time, whether it's subconscious or not, it's operating the whole time, which means that black women are routinely not given um, as much pain management medication they are routinely ignored when they're saying you know this doesn't feel right this doesn't you know and that's what I found I found that with my miscarriage my shorts are dripping like drenched with blood and it's it's following me like this stream is following me as I come out of the taxi as I walk to the um, emergency um, unit and luckily I had a paramedic with me who's also a student she's a twerk student so she happened to be with me and she happened to be a white woman and that was very very important in how all of this was playing out and so she brought me through the um, entrance that the paramedics would use and you know one of the nurses came forward male nurse he saw how I was covered in blood how it was following me how everything was just drenched and he turned to her and he was like oh could you take her to the main entrance please like could you use the main emergency entrance just because and she had to say to him quite forcefully why would we turn around now we're literally standing at this doorway you now want us to turn and do another like three minute walk to the other entrance for what reason and it also makes me feel a bit guilty. Yeah. What do I do with all of these emotions? Where she turned around and she's like, Kelechi, I've got to be honest with you. I only ever see this treatment when it's black people, specifically when it's black women. As a paramedic, I meet so, so many people and white women are not treated like this. For, yeah. for all wants and you know purposes they're not treated in this way so she said if you ever need me to um write a t uh, you know write a testimony to write anything let me know because I will write the letters mm. and I just I appreciated that so much because a lot of the time you can feel like did I imagine that I think when I think about motherhood, the first sort of thing that comes to my mind is like the deification of mother, you know, like when we growing up, you kind of think about mothers as all sacrificing, sometimes unnecessarily, um, all enduring, sometimes unnecessarily. We see all of these things as these kind of archetypes of mother. And, and it's interesting when you hear some people talk about their mothers and you think, are you, who are you talking about? It, it doesn't, it doesn't sound fun. It sounds like this big being that is just ever giving you know um oh yeah I remember when we were younger and there were like five grains of rice and like my mum would give us all the grains of rice and she wouldn't eat herself I thought what you know so I've always kind of 
I've always always found it rather interesting that whole thing thanks so much for tuning in for another episode of what it means to be um, make sure to check out the other episodes and to listen to the remaining episodes of Sour Hall